Are you serious? Are you serious, guys? Good morning, everybody. You know, we need encouragement in these last days. There is so much going on. I'm inside the production room here. We're getting things ready for today's live broadcast. It's going to begin at 12 noon Eastern. But I'm thinking about the book of Acts, and I'm thinking about chapter 3. This amazing story that took place in the early church. And here's what happened. It says, now Peter and John, they went together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And notice here, this is the grace covenant. This is the grace covenant. But the temple is still there. It has not been destroyed yet. It doesn't get destroyed till 70 AD on the ninth of all. Uh, which is the same day, the ninth of all, when the first temple was destroyed in 586 BC. The one built by Solomon. It's the hour of prayer. And even though they are Christians and believers in Yeshua, they're still going to the temple to pray at the time of prayer. Very important. And the Bible says it was the ninth hour, being the hour of prayer. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask and alms. He was begging for financial help. Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and he entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat at for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Because he always was there. Every day. At the hour of prayer. And they were filled with wonder. And amazement. At that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed. Held Peter and John. All the people ran together unto them. In the porch. That is called Solomon's. Greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it. He answered unto the people. Ye men of Israel. Why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly upon us? As though by our own power or holiness, we've made this man walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, Jesus, or Yeshua, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. And when he was determined to let him go, but you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. And yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I would that thou that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all of his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, be converted, and your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive unto the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. And this is a very important scripture because he's saying to them, look, this same Jesus that you all denied and maybe couldn't see and your leaders didn't agree with is the man. It's his name, the name of Jesus, Yeshua, that has healed this man at the gate. And so let me say to you all to repent and accept the Messiah as the Savior. For he is the King of Kings, folks, and he's the Lord of Lords. No question. 
Then Peter tells them to repent, that you could be saved and your sins could be blotted out. At the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Jesus shall return. He said, ye shall send Jesus Christ. He will send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive. So that's where Jesus is now. He was received back into heaven until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. Now, the, they had already asked Jesus, the disciples had already asked Jesus, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he had already told them, look, it's not for you to know the time or the seasons that my father hath in his own power, but you shall receive power. Go with me. Go to Acts chapter one for a moment. I'll read it with you. Um, Jesus told the people, look at verse four, being assembled together, now this is after Christ has already risen from the dead. And this is Acts chapter one, verse four. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? So they're asking about the restoring the political nation of Israel. He, he said unto them in verse seven, it is not for you to know the times or seasons, which the father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, that's the West Bank, and in Samaria as well, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had thus spoken these things, they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they stood steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, and they said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you in heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Now, so they asked, Are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said, Look, that's, that, that's not for you to know. That's for my father's decision. But you're going to receive the power of the Holy Ghost and become witnesses in this city of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the whole world. Then Jesus gets taken away. But later in Acts 3, Peter starts, after he heals the man, begins to talk about the restitution of all things. The times of the restitution of all things, which was spoken by the prophets of the, of the holy prophets of old. The restitution is the return of Israel as a nation, so that the king of kings, the Lord of lords can return because they, as Jesus was taken up, ye men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing to heavens? This same Jesus you see going away in a cloud is going to come again in like manner. And Zechariah already told you that when Jerusalem is under siege, that the Lord will stand. He will come and stand on the Mount of Olives, splitting it in half and delivering Israel and the Jerusalem and the children of Israel. So there is going to be a restitution of all things. That included the rebirth of Israel as a nation. And that doesn't happen until 1948. An incredible, uh, incredible, miraculous sign of the last days. And now, 71 years later, how close are we to his return? Well, the armies are gathering in the east, surrounding Israel for the battle that's yet to come and the soon coming king. We're in the last days. So get excited about what Jesus is doing until he comes. He's going to keep saving, healing and delivering. And our job is to share that gospel to the whole world. I'll be back with more encouraging words on these last days. I'm pastor Paul Begley. Are you serious? Are you serious? He's coming soon.